Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be doing a very specific Venn diagram problem from Discrete Math. Now this is problem 8 from section 1.2 of your free online Discrete Math textbook and I'll leave a link in the description so that you can check it out. Now whenever you're solving one of these problems where you're trying to figure out how many are in each part of a Venn diagram, the best way of going about this strategy is first to draw it. So here we have a set U which has 16,000 elements. I'll talk about that in a moment. And then we have three sets, D, M, and G. Now, wherever we're doing something like this, what I really like to do is to put in letters in every single section. Okay, so that means I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different separated regions. So I essentially disjointified my universe into eight different sections. That is not a word in the English dictionary, but it is a word in the math community. And I kid you not, that is a word, disjointify. It's a really cool word to use and I highly recommend it. Okay, so now that we've disjointified this universe, now we can interpret this, these numbers in terms of these variables, these unknown constants. So first up, we know that if we add all of those eight letters up, we get 16,000. So I'm gonna write that down below. X plus Y plus Z plus T plus S plus R plus A plus U equals 19,000. Now you might say, wow, that looks really complex. I mean, that's a lot of unknowns to figure out. Don't worry, this problem will get a lot easier pretty quickly. Once we write down the rest here. Now we also know that the size of D is 9,000. Now D only contains X, Y, T, and S. So if we add up all four of those, we get 9,000. So X plus Y plus Z plus, plus T plus S equals 9,000. Next up, we know that the size of M is 300. That means that M, which is Z plus S plus R, and then a Y2. And this gives us 300. Next, we know that the size of G is 1000. G is T, S, R, and A, those four sections. So T plus S plus R plus A gives us 1,000. Next up, we have also assume the number of day students who are mathematics majors is 250. Day students, let's see, day students who are also mathematics majors, so we're zoning in from the day students into the mathematics majors, that's 250. So Y plus S is 250. Fifty of whom are graduate students. So of these 250 here, Y plus S is 250. Fifty are graduate students. That means S is 50. Wow, look at that. They literally just give us that. S is 50. There are 95 graduate math majors. So graduate math majors is specifically... S plus R, so we're in the graduate region here, and then we zone in onto the math graduate students. So S plus R is 95. And the total number of day graduate students is 700. Now day graduate students is T and S. So T and S, Combined to make a total of 700. Let's see if we're given any more information here. Determine the number of students who are evening students. So we'll get to that in a moment. In theory, we should be able to solve for a lot of variables here. 
Now it's, I know this looks really confusing, but here we have S equals 50. And this is kind of like a Sudoku puzzle if you want to think of it this way. And if you've taken linear algebra, then you should just straight up plug this into a, um, a matrix, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight disjointified sections. So eight unknowns. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight equations so that's an eight by nine matrix and then you reduce row echelon form and that will tell you what all your letters are here and then you can just answer the questions pretty quickly but otherwise this is like a sudoku puzzle if you're not like if you're like what the heck is all that if you're really confused right now then this is just going to be a sudoku puzzle kind of so now we know that s is 50 which means that i can figure out what s plus r is since s is 50 that means R has to be 45 because then 50 plus 45 is 95. So R equals 45. Now, if S equals 50, I could figure out T as well here. S is 50 means T is 650. Here, I can figure out what Y is since I know what S is. S is 50, which means Y is the leftover, 200. So now I know what Y, R, s and t so i can find what z is since i know what y s and r are y is 200 s is 50 and r is 45 so that's 295 which means that z is 5. okay so now we have s r t y and z and you keep going. We just keep going until we get all of the letters. Like I said, this is kind of like similar to a Sudoku puzzle. Once you get the ball rolling, then the ball just keeps rolling. I can figure out what X is from this since I know what Y, T, and S are. Y is 200. T is 650. And S is 50. That means X has to be 8,300. And so what am I missing now? It looks like I'm missing A. Oh, we could figure out what A is from over here. Here we can get A equals, well, T plus S plus R is 745, which means left over I have 255. And then now I can figure out what U is using this top equation here. Now that I know what all of those letters are except U. And so that is... Darn it, I'm going to need a calculator for this one. <laughs> so it's 19,000, but minus X is minus 8,300. And then minus Y, which is 200, minus Z, which is 5, minus T, which is 650, minus S, which is 50, minus R, which is 45, minus A, which is 255. And I'm left with 9,495 being in U. Okay, so let's talk real quick. What do we just do? We just figured out what all the numbers are. That's what we just did. And so now we can actually answer the question easily. And here's the thing. If you don't solve it like this, then you're going to be looking at this picture trying to conceptualize the process that we just did. And conceptualizing that process is really difficult for many students, which is why I really think that students need this more systematic approach to this problem. So let's go through part A. Part A is the evening students. So everything outside of the day students, which is A, R, Z, and U. You just add up all of those. B, non-math majors. So that's everything outside of M, which includes X, T, A, and U. And so you just add up all of those four letters. For part C, undergraduates, day or evening. So anyone who's not a graduate, so that's X, Y, Z, and U, and you just add up all those four. We already know what these numbers are, and so just adding these numbers is just a matter of plugging into your calculator. Part E, evening graduate students. So these are graduate students who are not day students, which is A and R. That's it, just A and R. And then F, evening graduate mathematics majors. So outside of day because it's evening, and then they're also graduate, math majors. So it has to be in M and in G, 
So that's either S and R, but it can't be S because S is in D, which is a day. It has to be an evening. So R, F is R. So whatever R is, that's the answer. I think R was like 45, was it? So there you go. 45 is the answer to part F. And then last but not least, part G, evening undergraduate non-math majors. So everyone outside of D, also outside of G, also outside of M. That's just U, which is 9,495. And uh, yeah, the only way to calculate U, by the way, is if you had already calculated everything here. And if you think like, wow, this works looks crazy, this is a lot more organized than just doing it all here. Now, I know this looks tedious, but conceptually, I don't really think it's that tedious. I mean, in linear algebra, this is one of the first problems you learn how to solve. One of the first, and it's kind of presupposed that you know how to solve something like this. It's just tedious because it's long. So I know that's intimidating to a lot of students, but just understand that the intimidating part is not necessarily the conceptualization usually for this kind of thing, unless they're trying to do it all by just their head, which is kind of difficult in my opinion. So I don't know. This is my, my opinion is I think the extra work can make things a little bit smoother for some students. And if not, then maybe you're really good at your head or whatever. That's cool too. Anyways, thanks everyone. And I'll see you all in the next video.